Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Mandy and I'm gonna attempt that tail feather swipe thingy again. First one wasn't awesome, but it wasn't too shabby. But I wanna give it a shot again. So we're gonna use this 12 inch MDF round, making sure I'm not gonna get that weird faded looking light. Um, I'm gonna kinda go through my colors as I go because these videos tend to be a little bit long when trying something new. Um, I know the most recent one was long, sorry about that. But I try to show you the process because if, if you're learning and practicing, I know for me personally when I'm trying to learn something, I would rather see the whole video than it be like shortened because um, it helps me. So. All right, so I'm gonna, I've am i got some pillow paint down using Glidden Premium and Eggshell today. Um, this paint is great paint. It does have bubbles sometimes, so I usually put aside some in a smaller container um, to help with the bubbles. It does help. It doesn't always completely eliminate them, but the, the more you can let it sit, definitely helps with that. I'm just gonna, I'm putting a little too much pillow down just to make sure I don't have to overstretch the design to get to the edge. This is my perpetual problem. Um, but especially when trying something new, like if I was just doing like a typical swipe and stuff, this would be fine. I'm gonna just drop it on the canvas a little bit to pop some of the bubbles that are in there. Uh, I didn't pop them, at least not the ones I can see. Um, but some of them will pop as we are moving things along. So I am using mostly Prism Pour today from Color Art. Some of them are the new colors, and one of them is a sample color that hasn't come out yet, and one of them is a sample color that has come out yet. I'm just still using up the rest of my sample. And I'm using a little bit of Indian Spice because I only have a little bit left in the container that I mixed and I don't want it to dry out. And I'm gonna use Matisse Indigo and a black cell activator, which is M Gram Acrylics. I got it at Blick and I mix it with um, Australian Floetrol. So this one bubble I can see is super frustrating me, so I'm just gonna grab my little tweezers just in case I have to pop it. Sometimes even the toothpick doesn't pop them. It's this one right here. So I'm gonna lay down my prism pour sample first, and then I'm gonna put some colors on top of it. I'm just gonna go forward with that bubble there. And I'm going to do the tail feather thing with the bottom of a paintbrush. The last time I did the narrow part of the skewer and or the coffee stirring stick and I felt like what I used was a little too narrow so last time I used this and it worked but I felt like the point was a little too narrow so I want something that has a little bit more width but I would instead of using that I'm just going to use the bottom of a paintbrush a little bit wider and I'll just clean it off. Everything becomes a painting tool, you know? It's just the way it goes. So, just gonna get started. So, um, we're, this is the first color I'm gonna lay down. This is a prism pour sample. It's a really beautiful um, light purple. And it has a little bit of a color shift to it, probably like a blue. It's really beautiful. So we're gonna put a nice helping of that down. Now last time I made my little loop-de-loop -loop a little too big. I don't know that I'm going to do any better this time. But I'm going to give it a shot. Now I want a nice healthy dose of this one on there to kind of give us a nice ribbon of color. It's beautiful. Move this out of the way a little bit. And the next color I'm going to put down is Royal Sapphire, but this is 
the sample I had before it came out. So I still have some mixed up in my little cup. So I'm going to use that. Some of the other prison pour colors I'm going to use right out of the bottle. So something to note about the newest prison pour that has come out. Um, this is the best formula so far. It's very easy to use. You can mix it in your bloom recipe if you want to. Totally fine. And if you're going to do a large puddle, it would definitely help it go a little further. But when I'm just going to add the color on the top of you know, like if I was going to do this size puddle, I'd mix it with my pouring medium because I don't want to use the whole bottle, right? But you can also thin it down with a little bit of Joe Sonia on its own if you want, or you can use it straight out of the bottle. It works well. It does bloom without adding the varnish. So what I like about that as for someone who does blooms a lot, sometimes you want to do something and you haven't mixed your paint ahead of time. So you know if you go to do it, you're going to have to mix paint, let it set, that kind of stuff. Using boom gels are very convenient because you can just use them right out of the bottle. Well, the same with prism pour is, you know, if you're using it as a top layer or one of your layers and not like a huge puddle, you can definitely use it right out of the bottle. And so that makes it very versatile because if you have it here, you can just grab it and use it. So that's pretty cool, huh? So this is the next color, uh, Royal Sapphire. I don't feel like these colors are showing very well on camera, but it could just be because I have all this light facing me. So, so I'm going to put this one. in here, pretty decent dose of it here. Okay, beautiful color. Who doesn't love a turquoise or a teal, right? Always a win. And those stupid bubbles are bothering me. I'm gonna use, uh, I'm gonna put some indigo. This is a Matisse indigo. And what I did, because indigo is a very expensive color from Matisse, I have some golden, um, high flow indigo, which I don't even think they make it anymore, but to darken the color without using so much paint, I used that um, to just make my, my Matisse indigo last a little bit longer. I thought that was pretty smart of me. Over here complimenting myself. But, and I love this color. Um, so I'm getting kind of a wide band of paint here, so I probably should chill with how far I spread that, huh? I always like to drop paint in the negative space. It's awesome. So the next color I'm going to do is a little bit of pink diamond prism pour. And I'm just going to put it right out of the bottle. A beautiful color just like that see how fun that is just put it on there now I'm going to put a little peach dahlia right out of the bottle okay Sorry, I'm concentrating. So there we go. And this is kind of perfect for this because I really just want them to be a splash of color. And then I'm going to put Violet Rose, which is one of my favorites. Um, it's darker than this purple we laid down. Um, and it has kind of a blue shift to it. I love it. All right. Now, um, the last thing I'm going to put on is I have just a little bit of Indian Spice from some previous pours, so I'm just going to use it up. I just thinned it down for something I did yesterday, so it's not going to last much longer with such a little amount in that cup. 
So I'm just gonna use it up so I don't waste it. Add a little pop of gold. Indian Spice is from Color Art. Also, it's one of the Bling It colors. It was in the Ancient Treasures set. It's a beautiful gold. So this way we don't waste anything. Sometimes when I have like, like I know I wanna paint and I have all these ideas in my head and I can't make up my mind, I will deliberately grab colors that I'm almost out of. I'm just gonna put a little more indigo. And I will find a way to use them. Um, so that way it kind of, for one, it helps me make a decision about what to pour. And then, ooh, crap, hold on. I just dropped my <laughs> container of red violet on the floor and it broke open. I'll be right back. Sorry, everyone. I set something down behind me and knocked over, it was closed. I knocked over my, uh, my little container of red violet and it cracked open and spilled on the floor. And that's not an inexpensive paint, so I was kind of bummed out. Thankfully, it wasn't all of it. So now I'm gonna put my cell activator on my tool, which I'm using the Color Art Swiping Tool that I use pretty much all the time. Don't forget, you can uh, save 20% off of anything on the Color Art website. My code is in the description box below. It's Mandy1120. I also have a code down there for Pixel Paint Designs where I get my Australian Floetrol and um, my Boom Gels. So don't forget to take advantage of those discounts. <clears throat> okay. So I have this cell activator on my tool. I have a little bit too much paint here, mostly because it spread out while I was cleaning that up. So I think I'm going to, you know, I'm going to start here against my better judgment. I'm very gently going to bring it around. Last time I stopped too short and I had to start over and it really kind of messed up the flow of things. Most of this is gonna come off anyway, but while that's developing, I'm just gonna clean off my tool, move my cell activator out of the way, and um, where I have a lot in one area, I'm just gonna gently blow it to loosen up the surface tension a little bit. Okay, this is already going a little bit better than the last time, other than the spilling of the paint. That was kind of a bummer. And obviously I have a little bit of outside the lines action there, but it's all right. Sorry, I just bumped the tripod. I'm a mess today. Let me see if I can zoom you in so you can see a little bit better what's going on. Okay, I have paint all over me, so I'm limited to what I can accomplish. There we go. My little light I have on my phone is dying, so let me just take it off. All right, it wasn't doing a lot for the good of mankind anyway. All right, let me move this out of the way. And you can see on that place where I started the swipe, um, I obviously had more cell activator on that part. So I'm just gonna blow it out gently. One of my favorite things about the Gram cell activator is it produces cute little tiny cells, which are my favorite. I'm not going to obsess about this too much because a lot of that will come off. Um, but what I don't want it to be is this huge streak of black color that totally distracts from everything else. You know what I mean? So. Um, I'm gonna shift some of this that way to kind of make sure that it goes away. But I also still need to do the 
wrecking part. So let me make sure we don't have any giant bubbles here. We do have some. I tried to pop some after my paint catastrophe. Um, we have a couple. We don't want them to pop as they dry. We'd rather pop them before we spread this out because then they won't be as difficult to cover up. So this is the kind of tedious part of things. And there's even some stuff in the pillow here, but most of what I see there is going to come off, so I'm not going to spend too much time on that. But I love the colors we got from the swipe. Um, let's see. The dogs are snoring. For your listening pleasure, you probably can't hear them, but... All right, so I'm gonna try to remember how to do this now. And just like last time, I will link an inspiration video where you can see this done the right way. So if you've never seen one of these tail feather type swipes, you can see what I was attempting, even if I don't quite achieve it. Okay, kind of nervous about this still, but the reason why I'm nervous is because I'm going to wreck from here, and I really kind of want to know that this is going to go away, so, but I don't want to overstretch now because we're going to need to stretch in a minute, you know what I mean? So. This is the way my brain works. I do this and then I start to kind of overanalyze the next step. I think part of that is good, right? Because you want to foresee the disaster before it happens. But part of it kind of stumps your creativity, I think. All right. Well, either way, I kind of got it out of my system and got it mostly off of there and the rest Will probably spin off so I'm going to try to just tilt this a little bit back to the center and we'll go for it all right we still have a lot of bubbles here so so what I'm trying to do is Take each section and draw through it and mostly bring it to the same point, which is easy in theory, not that easy in application. So I'm wiping off the <clears throat> end of the paintbrush every time. I'm trying to go as close to the same distance in between each one as I can. And that one was a little closer than some of the other ones. It doesn't have to be perfect. Art is not perfect. As much as I would like it to be, it's not. So I'm getting this part a little bit better this time than I did last time. Last time I had these all go in different directions and I didn't really think it made a difference until I spun it out and then I was like, ew, I kind of screwed that up. And we do have this weird thing of paint here. I'm wondering if I should do something about it now or just wing it and hope it goes okay. I think we'll just wing it. Because we're gonna kind of draw through it anyway, which 
kind of makes it look more intentional. All right. That was kind of fun. Now we have to make sense of it somehow. Now, honestly, we have kind of spread it out already, so we can probably just spin and see what happens. What do y'all think? I wish you were able to tell me what you think. I think that what we'll do first is just walk this over a little bit. So when it spins, it spins kind of semi-even. Although, is there ever such a thing as a, kind of an even spin? And I'm gonna gently spin it in case it doesn't do what I want. I'm not necessarily looking for it to be perfectly centered because, um, I don't know, that as awesome as that would be, it doesn't usually work out that way. So, um, like for example, I have a lot more stuff here on the end, still showing negative space is the word I was looking for when I said stuff. And so I'm gonna help guide it, but what I don't wanna do is do that so much that I get um, wacky cells, because I like the structure of the cells that we have. And sometimes if you stretch or tilt too much after you spin, um, it can mess with your cell formation a little bit. So I'm just getting a couple bubbles that opened up after I spun. And then we're going to spin again, but I'm going to tilt just a little bit. Bubbles are out to get me. This part right here is really cool. I don't want to lose it and I'm afraid that I will. And I'm also kind of afraid to keep tilting because I don't want to lose what's going really nicely on here. Also, when you over tilt, you start to see some flocculation sometimes in your paint on the edges because it's being moved around so much and it can cause it to kind of start to break up. So let's spin gently again. We definitely still have a little too much paint on here. Um, not too, too bad. I bet if I covered it up, we could probably get away with it, but let's just try to get that a little closer to the edge. I really like it. It's not perfect, but it's definitely a lot more what I was going for than the first time. This weird little cell here. Um, I'm going to gently tilt this way. This kind of does look like a very colorful peacock tail. What do you guys think? Is it super funky? I don't really have the intentional negative space I was kind of going for. I really did kind of want some negative space, but that's because I used too much pillow paint, which means we got to get it off of there. So. We can't leave too much on. So when you, in case you don't know this, and forgive me if it's redundant, but if you leave too much paint on, you run the risk of your paint cracking as it dries. So that's why when you hear us say, oh, I, I can't leave that much paint on, that's why. So I'm curious what your thoughts are. So we're at the point where we can spin again I'm worried it's going to get kind of fuzzy over here if we do because we've already tilted this side a lot. So if it were you, and I know you can't really help me right now, but if it were you and you had this little block of color, would you just leave it and think it works, you know, it's, it's different, but it works. Or would you spin until you could get it off? I'm curious what your thoughts are. I love this part and I kind of don't want to spin anymore because I'm afraid to lose some of this. Um, we do have a little bit too much paint on 
but it's not like jiggling. So if I covered it with a food net like I do and then maybe put a shirt or something on top of it to slow down the drying process, that might be good. But I'm so curious, what would you guys do? Is this, is me leaving this on here, is it kind of cool or is it, does it totally mess with you that there's that here? Or does it look intentional, you know? I'm just curious how your brain works because I know seeing it there makes me think, well, if it's there and it's not everywhere, then it doesn't make sense. But again, it's okay for things not to be symmetrical. So let me know what you think. I think if it if I leave it here, I kind of want to smooth it out a little bit. Like maybe come through here with a thin part of this little skewer and maybe um, kind of move it a little bit. I don't really know that that helped anything. Over here, I feel like anything I do would kind of make it more noticeable. Even if I kind of went through it to soften it so it's not such a block of color. I don't really know that that does anything for it, you know what I mean? I'm curious what you guys think. I'm curious if the things that bother me bother you guys. We're all wired differently, right? Some things, some people appreciate the lack of symmetry in something and some people are like, oh, I wouldn't have left that on there either, you know? So I'm curious. But I always have to remind myself, are you gonna compromise the whole thing for one part that you're a little iffy about? So right now, if I were to look at an orientation, I kind of like it like this, where this part's kind of off center. And if we leave it like this, that kind of works. If you go like this, that's a lot more noticeable, but that, but you know, like the tail part's also further over this way. So if we do it like this, it kind of looks intentional. So I'm gonna gently spin, gently, I'm gonna gently spin a couple more times and just see if I can get that just a little closer to the edge without losing some of the beautiful cells we have on this side closer to me. I think just getting that royal sapphire color to be the main block of color in the corner kind of makes that work even better. So now I can, I can live with it because we have that vibrant color here and then we have it over here in some blocks. So let me get cleaned up and then I'm going to give you a little close up and I'm going to really hope that this dries nicely because there's probably a little bit too much paint left on there uh, but I'll be right back. All right wonderful people so here is our piece close up. Um, the only other thing I did is I took the Sorry, my hands are covered in paint. Took the end of the paintbrush and just kind of went through the block of color right here just to make it flow a little bit better. So here is the part that I knew if we keep kept messing with it, it would get a little bit wonky. In a perfect world, I would have liked to have moved some of this down so that this kind of rested down here and opened up more of this, but this is only my second time trying it, so I'm pleased with the outcome. Um, here is where we have that little block of royal sapphire, which now that we have it closer to the edge, it works for me. And here's where you start to see those cute little cells. I really love the M-gram as a cell activator. I have only tried the black, but I'm going to try the white titanium white that is. A little pop of um, Indian spice adds a nice little pop of gold in here. And really love this little section of cells up here. And 
This part right here is my favorite because all the boldness of the colors really stand out and kind of just flows into the other color. I just think it's really beautiful. So let me know what you think. Thank you so much for hanging out while I try new things. Um, if you saw the first one, what do you think? How does this compare to the first one? I'm a long way from getting this down, but that's why we practice, right? But thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, thank you for all of you who continually provide ongoing support. I'm so encouraged by all of the kind things that you say and grateful to be part of such a caring art community. So have a wonderful day. Stay safe and healthy, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.